All right, I'm back. We're on page 297, and we just recently learned the power rule, which says that to find the derivative of a power function, which is a variable, to a real numbered power. So like x to the third, x to the pi, r to the radical two, whatever. These are all power functions. We can find the derivative by bringing the exponent down and then subtracting one from the exponent. That'll be kind of the net result of taking the derivative. What's great about that is that we don't need to always rely on the limit definition of the derivative, which you probably don't super enjoy using. It's always nice to take a limit because you know they, they work out and it's really satisfying at the end, but like we all know it's like a little annoying. Um, so let's see if we can do this. So we want to find f prime of t. All right, so f of, there's a typo here, obviously. Uh, our function is actually a function of x. So let me just change that right there, head off all those complaints. All right, so we want to find f prime of one. Well, first we're going to find f prime of x. So let's do that. So f prime, you know what? Before I do that, there's one little step I got to do, right? Because I see a radical and radicals are the worst. So f of x is x to the negative third plus two x to the one half minus x to the negative four fifths. All right, that's a weird function. Like, you're not gonna run into that function all that often. F prime of x, so power rule. All right, bring the exponent down, so negative three, x to the, subtract one from negative three, you get negative four. All right, plus, so this is the constant multiple rule, so two, just like write to now find the derivative of x to the one half. So the derivative of x to the one half is one half x to the negative one half. Okay, minus, so uh, eventually you're just gonna skip a lot of these steps and as we go on, I'll start skipping a lot of these steps, but for now it's kind of useful to write them out. Uh, we're gonna bring the exponent down and then we'll subtract one. So negative four fifths minus five fifths is negative nine fifths. Okay, we don't really need to simplify this because we just need f prime of one, but I'm gonna simplify it anyway. So equals negative three x to the negative fourth plus x to the negative one half plus four fifths x to the negative nine fifths. All right, so on my own, I probably would have found this derivative without doing uh, really either of the first two steps. I probably wouldn't have rewritten it. I would have just like thought it through in my head. Um, and then I also probably wouldn't have shown that middle step where we're like doing two times one half x to the negative one half. But you know, when you're just starting out, it's fine to show as many steps as you need. So let's see, f, oh my gosh, okay, f, let me write, okay, f prime, it was just rejecting every time I tried to write, f prime of one is negative three plus one plus four fifths. All right, so what is that? That's negative 15 fifths plus five fifths is negative 10 fifths. I don't know, it's negative two. Uh, negative 10 fifths plus four fifths is negative six fifths, I think. All right, so that's f prime of one, which we know means that's the slope of the curve at x equals one. It's also the slope of the tangent line. So if we want the equation of the tangent line, uh, we're going to need to know what f of one is. So f of one is just one plus two minus one, so two. One is a great number to plug into this particular function. Uh, any other number is probably not going to be that great. So we get this, and then, uh, so it's gonna be y, so we should label it tangent line y minus two equals negative six fifths x minus one. I think that's our tangent line. All right, so now, based on the slope of the tangent line, would you say that f of x is increasing or decreasing at x equals one? Probably wanna justify this, so I'm gonna say since f prime of one equals negative six fifths, which is less than zero, f of x. It really doesn't like the way I'm making f's today and I don't really know why that is. I don't know if it's like, does it think I'm trying to make a circle and it wants to like auto correct that? I don't know. Uh, f of x is, so if the slope is negative, the function is decreasing. When we say increasing and decreasing, we always mean as we move from left to right. It's like a very biased way of talking, but always as we move from left to right. So as you move from left to right through x equals one, the function will decrease. So f of x is decreasing 
at x equals one. And there you go, that's the whole thing. All right, so the next thing we wanna do, I think is actually gonna take like a little while or at least I'm gonna talk a ton. So I think what I'll do is maybe stop this video here um, and then come back in the next video and do that problem because I'm gonna to wanna to talk about it like kind of a lot. Um, so I'm gonna stop here and I'll see you then. Uh, yes, till then, later.